Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Central PA Fishing Report with George Costa of TCO Fly Shop in State College. How you doing, George? I'm amazing as always, Marvin. How are you? And as always, I'm just trying to stay out of trouble. Uh, how do things look on the water in your neck of the woods? Low and clear as it has been for the past few months. We have still not gotten any any decent rain up here in Central PA. Um, showers keep kind of passing over us, and water is you know a b- little below seasonal average. So the average is pretty low this time of year to begin with. So we're a little below that. Um, but the temps are good. Leaves are in the water, so on those windy days, it's been kind of rough getting around those leaves. Um, but fish have been have been eaten. It's been pretty good fishing otherwise. But low clear conditions. Yeah, obviously the streamer bite's just going to keep getting better and better. You have any dry fly action for folks? Um, yeah, dry fly has not been bad. There's been some caddis around. There's olives around. So um, there's definitely been some dry fly activity, um, you know, sporadically through the day, just kind of kind of be in the right spot at the right time. Streamer bite has definitely picked up. We are starting to see red, so fish are starting to spawn. Um, so please be aware of that. Don't fish to them and just kind of avoid them if you can. Um, nymphing has been consistent. Um, you know, uh, caddis people have really been working well when those smaller tan caddis have been coming off. Um, so the action has been good. Just got to get out there and, you know, grind a little bit and find those, find those feeding fish. Yeah. And do you still have any October caddis? Um, I've saw a couple early in the week. There's a handful around, but not a, not a ton. Mostly it's been tans about a size 14, 16 olives. Um, mid just have really been top water action. There's a handful of Octobers around, but they kind of started tapering off a little bit. Um, that's pretty much it on top. Yeah, there you go. Well, I guess they know how to read a calendar too, right? Yeah, they do. It's almost November. We're just about there. There you go. Well, it's a good question for you, given the conditions. Owen wanted to know your go-to tactic for fishing low and clear water with spooky fish. Mm, That's, you know, the the perennial age-old question is just general rule of thumb is longer leaders for dry fly, um, depending on the water type. Um, Streamers, I don't change too much. Mostly, mostly my tactic is I just kind of change my approach. Um, with low clear water like this, I really focus more on the upstream presentation, less on the, you know, downstream or across, you know, you figure if, if you're in a position where a fish can see you, it's going to spook. So try to focus more on upstream presentation to those fish and, you know, just, just make sure they don't see them. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So, uh, maybe a good time to wear really drab colors, right? Yeah, exactly. You're not wearing those chartreuse, you know, um, traffic shirts out there on the water this time of year for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess too, maybe keep a low pro. <clears throat> yeah, keep a low profile. You know, go longer and lighter. And then I guess yeah. too, you know, do you kind of change up your strike indicator game if you're nymphing to either use a dry fly or maybe some yarn or something like that? Um, yeah, for sure. Like I, I like uh, depends. You know, if I'm if I'm high sticking, you don't have to worry about that too much with like a euro rig. But um, I do like you know lighter indicators this time of year um a dry dropper really is still a good way to to really get out those fish without spooking them with um like a big without having like a big a thing of bobber or a, a sh- uh, airlock on or something like that so yarn indicators are really good for a softer presentation but a lot of it really depends on the water type that more riffly water you don't need to worry about spooking as much but if you're fishing that you know really clear you know still stuff then you're going to want to definitely lighten up your presentation with maybe a yarn indicator or something like that. Yeah, got it. And I know too that you're um, that you're rolling into having all kinds of people show up in the shop to teach and presentations and classes. You want to give folks a head up, heads up about mm-hmm. some of that stuff. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. We still got some spots left for Blaine's class coming up in mid November. He's on the calendar for November ninth. 19- Teens up here in State College, um, maybe the 12th, maybe the 12th. Um, but check our website for that. So Blaine's doing a class up here, which is great. we got a couple of beginners classes um, coming up in November as well for fly tying. If anybody's out there interested in learning how to do that, check out our website, uh, tcoflyfishing.com, under the Education tab, and you can check those out. Um, other than that, you know, you can get us on the normal spot here uh, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. Sundays, we're here 9 to 3. And tcoflyfishing.com on the web. Yeah, well, there you go. And you know, folks, we love questions on the Articulate Fly. You can email them to us. You can DM us on social media, whatever's easiest for you. And if we use your question, I will send you some Articulate Fly swag. When you're drawing for something cool from the shop at the end of the season. And, you know, George already hooked us up with hours and everything. So, folks, I would just say fall is my favorite time to get out on the water. You owe it to yourself to get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, George. Take it easy, Marv. <laughs>